Okay, so this video will almost certainly have a part two. Um, so really, I'm just scratching the surface here with a few very prominent issues that are going on now, namely uh, Trump's tariffs and the Singapore summit. Um, the two events are not directly linked, but there is a lot of commentary to be made around them. And it, it's a very strange situation because here you have a US president who's going out of his way to reach out to a pariah state, the dictator presiding over that state. Um, and it's a massive gamble. And it's hard not to give Trump some respect, at least for, from that point of view, the courage to take on that gamble and potentially bring peace to the Korean Peninsula, or at least be partly instrumental in that. You know, as much as I hate to admit it, Kim would have to get credit as well. Um the main issue at the Singapore summit isn't the human rights in North Korea, although I think that should be brought up, but the main issue will be the denuclearization. Um, if if Trump pulls this through, it will be a huge foreign policy success. Now, earlier I looked at um, a White House video. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if you call it a campaign video, I suppose just a general um, weekly video. And it was saying they said it couldn't be done and it was healing the um, economic growth in the US. Um, the American economy is in quite a strong state at the moment. So, again, that will probably go down as um, a plus point for Trump. It will help him in re-election in 2020, most likely. And it had this archive footage of Obama and Hillary Clinton, um, you know, saying that Trump's economic policies would damage the um, country, etc. But... This Singapore summit is coming amid Trump leaving the G7 summit in Canada. I believe it was in uh, Quebec. Um, not sure exactly, but, um, you know, with a, with a bad taste because of these tariffs he's now threatening to impose on Canada. Um, I don't know all the ins and outs of this. Economics is not my field, so I'm not going to pretend I, you know, I... I'm well versed in everything, uh, all the details of this, but it just strikes me as incredibly strange that Trump would be going out of his way to meet a pariah state whilst seemingly not caring about his actions damaging relations with some of America's closest allies, particularly Canada, um, certainly Britain and France as well, but the tariffs are particularly hitting Canada. And I think that's... Um, I think it's a case of Trump taking Canada for granted because Canadians are famously polite. They are not particularly belligerent people. So I think Trump's kind of taking it for granted. That, oh, well, they're not going to, it's not like Canada's going to declare war on us or something. So whatever. And that sort of um, um, belligerent attitude, that sort of um, pompous attitude, frankly, is um, is quite concerning because when the Western world is divided, it's it's not good. It's not good for liberal democracy. Um, and certainly from the Canadian perspective, they've been arguing that, um, I mean, apparently Trump in the phone call with Trudeau invoked the war of 1812. Didn't you guys burn down the White House? Well, I confess, we done it, Donald. It was the British that done that. This is a demonstration of just how ignorant it, Trump is on history. And it's not that a president has to be um, a historic scholar, but a basic knowledge would help. Um, you know, when you're in a testy phone call with another world leader and you can't even get the event right. Imagine had that been um, China or a country that would not exactly, you know, that wouldn't be an American ally. It would potentially create a major diplomatic incident. This is why Trump is such a polarizing and reckless figure. So yes, you can point to the strong economy. Yes, you can point to the Singapore summit. Although we'll see what happens with this. In itself, it's historic. It's the first time an American president's met a North Korean leader, possibly ever, I think, um, or certainly for a very long time. It is a historic event already, but we'll see what the outcome is. So that's why that requires more commentary later on. But it just strikes me as bizarre that Trump would go out of his way to create this friction with allies. Um, and it isn't just Canada, it's also European Union countries, and yeah, the UK as well. Um, it, it's just a very strange thing, and I think from the Canadian perspective, it's it's not only 
bizarre and hard to fathom, but it's also hurtful because Canadians, not only did they serve alongside American troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, and um, a significant number of them died in Afghanistan and were wounded, but also on 9-11, it was Canada that went out of its way to accommodate the, the emergency situation, you know, diverting flights and so on. Canada, on many, many occasions, has went out of its way to show its friendship to the United States. And this is how Trump repays them. So I can understand Canadians being angry and and bemused by this situation. Um, and I Ameri- imagine many Americans are embarrassed by it. I imagine many Americans don't want this any more than the Canadians do. Canada said they're going to impose um, reverse tariffs. Um, now, Trump supporters will say, well, he's just keeping his campaign promise to keep, you know, put America first. But look at where that has led. It's led to pulling out of the Iran deal, which is sending out a mixed message. You know, whilst reaching out to North Korea, it's um, sending out the opposite message to Iran. Um, my own view on that is that certainly we can't be complacent about the nature of the Iranian regime. But it's reversing years of hard work, hard won negotiations. And it's, I think, a bit of a myth that it's entirely one sided, as Trump is insisting. Uh, the Iranians have a lot of obligations with that. So I think it's a very dangerous move. And I'm not convinced that it is the right move. Um, it seems to me better to contain the Iranian regime rather than let them do what they want. Um, now, people will say there's, you know, they'll make analogies to the 1930s and so on. I don't think it's the same thing. As hideous as the Iranian theocracy is, I don't think it's the same thing. But um, that's also impacting the Iranian people, the, um, some of the sanctions that are going on, because, you know, it impacts issues like playing components, um, which is leading to more aviation disasters. But anyway, that's not to go too far off on a tangent. But there's other areas. The Paris Climate Agreement, Trump pulled out of that. This is a president who is keeping his campaign promise, and I've no doubt it will make him very popular with his base. But what is it doing? It's polarizing America on the world stage. Now, there is this arrogant idea, well, America is so powerful, it doesn't matter. But I think that will damage the United States. You know, um, I do not think it is good for Western democracies to be getting into this sort of situation. And it's, it's going to be a very negative legacy of Trump putting up this unnecessary animosity with um, neighbouring states, you know, treating Canada like a national security threat. That is, that's appalling. That's appalling when you consider the sacrifice Canadians have made serving alongside um, their American comrades. Um, It also, from a national security point of view, it's not very smart because it's polarising a military ally. Now, Granted, Canada is nowhere near as strong as the United States militarily. Very few countries are. But it's still not a particularly smart move. Let's say for the sake of argument, God forbid there was another 9-11 scale attack in the United States. The US would immediately have to rely on Canada and Mexico um, in terms of, well, the, the flight situation and a range of other things. Probably no other country was as directly impacted in terms of fallout um, from 9-11 as Canada. So it, it's just a very strange situation. And um, whatever justifications there may be for it in terms of what Trump claims is unfair practices to treat Canada like, I mean, he's basically putting Canada in the same category as China, which he's called a trade manipulator, um, rightly or wrongly. That's, that's the situation. It's like Trump is saying every other country is the enemy. What sort of foreign policy is that? Certainly, it's one thing being nationalistic and assertive. It certainly plays to the base. But all this is doing is polarizing the world's only superpower. And that cannot be good for the world. Um, You know, say what you want about Obama, but he was a statesman. You know, he reached out to people. What Trump does is, you know, send insults and tweets and they can't even get his basic history right. So... It's a very strange situation. If the Singapore summit is a huge success, Trump will get credit for for that. Fair enough. But it's just very strange that this is coming on top of that very, um, you know, the raw feelings at the G7. Um, This is at a time, 
you know, when Russia is being belligerent, when the G7 needs to be stronger than ever, G6, as it probably soon will be. Um, now, to be fair, that is no longer as significant as the G20. Now, as I remember back in the 2000s, you know, a G6, G7, G8 summit, as it then was, being a really big deal, you know, it was, um, I would say it's lost its clout in that time, uh, surpassed by the G20, and perhaps rightly so, the G20 is um, is a bigger event, it involves more countries. So, nevertheless, so, it, it's, you know, the G7 consists of countries that America really should be close to, and you know, Trump likes to say, oh, I, I love this guy, I have great relations, etc. But he's really sending out mixed messages. And it's it's a very strange situation. So my sympathies lie with the Canadians on this one. Um, and I mer imagine mer many Americans feel embarrassed by it. I don't think this will help America. I don't think it certainly won't help Canada. Um, and the Canadians aren't going to just take it. So it's a sad situation when you have two countries that should be close, you know, having this sort of unnecessary friction. And like I say, to a lesser extent with France and Britain, um, I don't think the tariffs are going to be as strong. But from a British perspective, actually, um, when we come out of the EU in March next year, we need to be looking at strong relations with countries outside the EU as well. Um, you know, we already have strong relations with Canada, the US and so on, but this sort of thing is going to create uncertainty. And it's just really sad um so history will judge how this plays out but i have a bad feeling about it and you know it is not a good idea to divide and weaken the west all trump is doing is um and ironically he's actually helping america's if you like opponents by um rivals by doing this because it is weakening western liberal democracy by creating this sort of friction that is unnecessary very strange situation.